What exactly is a vacuum system and when does it make sense to use one in your underwater camera housing? Stick around and we'll look into this topic in today's Back to Basics episode. Hi there underwater filmmakers and thank you very much for tuning in again. My name is Matthias and you're watching the Underwater Filmmaking School with another episode of Back to Basics. Now if you're new here to the channel and interested in learning more about underwater videography, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you're not missing out on any content that will be uploaded here in the future. And also have a look through all the different formats that we've got here on the channel, specifically through all the different playlists. But now let's get into today's topic and let's talk about vacuum systems and leak detection systems on underwater camera housings. This video today will be um, divided into three different parts. First of all, we talk about what a um, vacuum system is, generally speaking. We'll look into how it works. And last but not least, we look at the pros and cons of using a vacuum system on your underwater camera housing. Shall we get started? Let's do it. So per definition, a vacuum system is a system that ensures watertight integrity of your underwater camera housing before you enter the water. And that's the important part. You can check and make sure that your underwater camera housing is 100% watertight before you even put the housing inside the water and therefore before you um, run the risk of getting water inside the housing and potentially damaging your camera. While you're underwater then, you've got a leak detection system integrated in the camera that will let you know whether or not the integrity of the housing stays stable throughout the entire dive and it will let you know either by uh, an audible signal or a visual signal as well um, if the integrity is failing or about to fail so you can react, come up to the surface in time before water actually enters the housing and again potentially damages your camera. So let's talk about how a vacuum system actually works, what is behind it. Now I've got my personal housing here today to uh, be able to show you this guys. This is the Nauticam housing for my GH5S. Normally um, I have a lot more stuff hanging off that housing. This is a stripped down version. I've normally got a, a monitor, a Ninja 5 on here. I've got some lights on here. I've got a tripod on here, but for simplicity, I've stripped it all down. So it's just here, um, it's just a core housing that we're gonna look at today. If you're interested in learning more about the complete rig that I use to get my underwater video footage captured, um, there's gonna be a link to a video up here somewhere. Feel free to go and check that out. It will just explain all the different parts that I use um, in my camera rig to film underwater. But looking at the um, vacuum system in the housings of Nauticam, what you'll find is um, a little vacuum valve here at the top. We'll have to unscrew uh, the cap here first. Um, and this is where you're actually going to suck out some air out of the housing because with a vacuum system, what we're trying to do is create a under pressure inside the housing. Um, and then there is sensors inside the housing that will monitor that pressure um, and make sure that it stays stable. And if it doesn't stay stable, you can see a little LED light here at the bottom, which is not activated right now, but once I activate it, um, you will see it flash in different colors and the different colors will mean different things. You've got a blue color that basically says that we are We've got ambient pressure. This is the normal color that will um, actually be on as soon as we turn it on. Um, once we start sucking out the air of the housing, it will go into a yellow flashing color and it will be solid green once it's um, established a, um, an integrity on the housing and then under pressure inside the housing. This should stay green throughout your entire dive because um, that obviously means the pressure hasn't changed inside the housing. Now, if for whatever reason the pressure does change um, and the integrity is, uh, um, is broken on the um, housing, it will start to flash yellow 
which basically means it's probably a good idea for you to start coming up to the surface and aboard that dive. If then again, um, as a further step, you get some water getting into the camera, it will start flashing red and it will also give you an audible signal, like an alarm that, trust me, you can't overhear underwater. It's very, very clear that there's a problem and you will have to get up to the surface immediately, um, not to risk um, getting your camera flooded. So let's have a look inside here. If we open up, this is actually a bit difficult to do the other way around, but if we open this up, put that aside, you can see that there's some cables running down along the bottom here. You will see uh, a battery um, inside there and there's sensors here and up here on the top that monitor the pressure inside the housing. Now there's a switch that you can turn on and once this is on, and we'll turn it around, you can now see the light being blue, which means we're on ambient pressure right now. As soon as we put it together and I start sucking the air out, you'll see how this changes. But another thing I want to show you is the audible alarm that will sound as soon as water enters the housing. Now to do so, there is some connections down here that I need to wet a little bit. So we'll do just that. And you can hear that very, very clearly. This is not a good signal. So as soon as you hear that, it's time for you to get up to the surface immediately. Turning it off and on again, and now we'll put that housing together. All right, so as we said before, you've got your blue light there. We use our um, manual vacuum pump that is supplied with all the, um, uh, whenever you purchase a vacuum system from Nauticam and we can just suck out the air from the housing. As we do so, you can see that the light turns into a flashing orange or yellow, which means we're not on ambient pressure anymore, but we're not where we want to be yet. And if we keep doing this for a little while, We should get to a green light, there we go. So now you can see a solid green light and having that, it means that your housing, the integrity of your housing is, um, is complete and is safe and you can take it into the water without having to worry about any water getting inside the housing. My advice is once you've done this, keep the housing um, just for about 15 minutes before you take it in the water. This is just to make sure that um, the integrity really is stable inside the housing and there's not a tiny little leak that will let some air enter back into the housing. Obviously, what you don't want to forget is to put that little cap back onto your uh, vacuum valve. If you don't do this, this is not actually watertight without the cap. So you'll be able to get down to about one or two meters and then the water pressure is going to be too strong and water will enter through here. So be careful, always putting that cap back on there. So let's talk about pros and cons when it comes to using a vacuum system on your underwater camera housing. Now on the pro side, I would definitely say that you get a lot of extra security using a vacuum system and a leak detection system on your underwater camera housing. Also, you get a lot of peace of mind, which is really important to me because the last thing I want to worry about when I have to get into the water to capture a specific shot while I'm on a project is to worry about whether or not my camera housing is really going to hold up, whether it's going to um, stay dry and whether my camera is going to stay safe inside the housing. That's stuff I don't want to worry about. And using a vacuum system and a leak detection system, I can really trust that um, once I've got that green light on the surface and I leave it there for like say 15 minutes and it's still green, I can be assured that I can get in the water without any, um, any risk of getting water inside my housing. Another pro I would say is that the um, vacuum systems nowadays are very, very easy and foolproof to use. You cannot really do a lot of things wrong using a vacuum system and the leak detection system. The only thing that can actually happen is you 
forgetting to turn it on before you get into the water, but that should uh, be noticed by you before you actually do get into the water. On the con side of using a vacuum system on your underwater camera housing is uh, two things basically in my opinion. First of all, it's uh, an extra cost that is involved in getting the vacuum system and installing it into your existing or a new underwater camera housing. And it's obviously also the extra time that you need to create the under pressure to create that vacuum before you get into the water. So you just need a little better planning before you dive. So you need to make sure that your housing is set up and ready to go, let's say 10, 15 minutes before you're planning on getting into the water. Um, but I think that those two negatives or cons, um, they don't outweigh the benefits in any way. And I personally think that having a vacuum system, a leak detection system on your underwater camera housing is a huge benefit. And I personally, I would never dive without having a vacuum system and a leak detection system installed in an underwater camera housing. And there you go guys, this is my little explanation, my short explanation on the topic of uh, um, vacuum systems and leak detection systems in underwater camera housings. Um, I know I dragged this video out a little longer than I intended to, I'm very sorry for that, but I thought it was very important to give you all the information that I have and I find important when we talk about the topic of uh, vacuum systems and leak detection systems in your underwater camera housings. Because let's be honest, no one wants to have a flooded camera on any of our dives. Now, if this video was useful to you, if you've got something out of it, please do hit that like button, letting me know that you enjoyed the content today and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet, so you're not missing out on any future content that will be uploaded here on the channel. Also, if you've got friends that are interested in learning about underwater filmmaking, why not let them know about the channel here and send them to one of our videos so they can benefit from the knowledge that we share with you guys here on the channel as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any comments regarding today's video or any of the other videos, please feel free to put them down in the comment section below. And until next time, safe diving, and I'll see you in the next video. The vacuum. The vacuum. So, I do the vacuum. This is the vacuum, you know, because I'm, I'm not German really, but vacuum is vacuum. Hello Underwater Filmmakers and welcome to another, to another episode of the Underwater Filmmaking School.